Hi, welcome back to Smarter Marketing, where we're going to explore the world of digital marketing and share actionable strategies to help you achieve better results. I'm your host, Terry, and in today's episode, we're continuing our series on search engine optimization, SEO best practices. We'll be diving into on-page optimization. So let's get started. Before we dive into the specifics, of on-page optimization, let's recap what SEO is all about. Search engine optimization is the practice of optimizing your website and the content built into your website, improving its visibility and organic rankings in search engine result pages. So when somebody Googles a topic and you are relatable, your website shows up and shows up higher in the search results. By following these best practices, you're gonna gain more relevant traffic and potential customers to your website. Now let's focus on what happens on the page inside your website, optimizing that, which refers to strategies and techniques that you can implement directly on your site to enhance its search performance. Effective on-page optimization can significantly impact your website's visibility and the ability to attract organic search result traffic. That means when somebody goes to Google and wants to find something about your business, but they don't know your business yet, Google's going to come to your website, identify what you're talking about, and present that to the person in Google who is searching for something that is important to them. The first and most crucial element of your on-page optimization is keyword usage. And you've heard this before, keywords are not a buzzword, but an important word that we're gonna talk about a lot. I want you to conduct a thorough keyword research to identify relevant keywords that align with your business and your audience. Think about finding some tools to help you. We talked about that in one of our earlier videos, but an easy one might be trends.google.com. So if you put that into your internet browser right now, trends, T-R-E-N-D-S, dot Google, dot com, it will give you the opportunity to look up and compare five keywords at a time. And in that, it will have the ability for you to um, compare search intent. So whether they're looking for information or shopping or directions, you can see that and it will give you suggestions that you may not have thought about. And then change the timeline to 12 months because that helps you to identify a trend if there's seasonal trends, for example, um, to look at it in comparison over the year and then change your geography. So if you want to go and drill down to your state or the United States, if that's your audience, you'll be able to compare that as well. Incorporate what you find as the winning ones. And if you find one that flat lines at the bottom, you'll see the chart that goes across the 12 month timeline. And if it's a flat line, then just assume that nobody's searching for what you typed. Try another one, change it until you find the best. Incorporate those words that are the winning keywords into your page. And here's what I want you to put them and think of that could be the page title. There are meta descriptions the headings, which are the big bold words within your page content, and the content itself. Use them naturally, though. I don't want you to go in there and just start stuffing keywords in there just anywhere that doesn't make sense because that is actually going to negatively impact your rankings. Meta tags are another important on-page element. They're little snippets of code that provide information about your web page to the search engine. So Google reads these things called meta tags. The two most significant ones are going to be the title and the description. The title tag is the actual clickable headline in the search engine results. So it would be website.com forward slash your page. That is the title. Instead of having your page, what it should be is website.com forward slash insert the keyword here. The meta description, on the other hand, describes a brief summary of the content. And that should also include 
the exact keyword phrase. Using them with those relevant and compelling words and the concise description helps to encourage click-throughs from search engine users. So you show up in the search result, you made it there, and now you've got the best title and the best description to help me want to click on your result and go to your website. All right, so we get there, we go to your website page, and there are one, the page title, and then we scroll down a little bit and we see the top of your website page has a bold phrase. What is this page about? So think of it as the title of this chapter. And then we go through it and we start reading content down the page. And there's another bold heading and it segments some of it. And then another body of text and then another bold heading. Those are what we refer to as headings. And to abbreviate it, we call those H1, H2, and H3, or heading one, heading two, and heading three. H1, as you can imagine, is the most important thing that your Google robot is going to identify. H2 is second, and H3 is third. So if you can structure the content and highlight the sections and use those keyword phrases in the H1, H2 and H3, so your heading and your subheadings, that helps to highlight those important sections to readers as well as to the Google robot that comes and in, indexes the content to be found on this page. But use it naturally, again, within your headings, so that way the search engines will be alerted to this topic and relevance. We don't just randomly put them in there if it doesn't make sense. We actually do get dinged if, if I have the search intent for something and your website tricked me into getting there for something that was trending, for example, and the content is not what I expected and I leave you are going to um, be affected negatively in the search rank. So make sure it is relevant, That which brings us here to content quality and relevance. If you can create high quality, engaging, informative content that meets the needs of your target audience, then you're going to rank higher. And Google wants to show good relative content to me and the search results. So if your website provides quality information, they are happy to rank you higher. If you can include the relevant keywords naturally throughout the content, then it's going to improve the visibility in the search engines. Additionally, ensure that it is readable. So when you read it out loud, does it sound like it flows well? Does it make sense? Is it well organized? And includes images, videos, maybe infographics or something like that that enhances the user experience. That then in turn helps keep me on your web page a little bit longer. So the longer I'm on your site, the better it is for your ranking and it signals Google to say, wow, this person was here for a pretty long time. And then at the bottom, we talked in one of the other videos about creating those internal links. So once I'm done reading it, I find it valuable. I click on another internal link on your website that even helps even more. So you creating content is really important to your SEO structure and that technical aspect of it. Another crucial on-page optimization factor is the URL structure. We talk about this in our technical video, but I'm going to touch on it here because it's really important to um, have the end of your website title, the URL, which is the www.website.com forward slash keyword phrase. That then is on-page optimization, meaning that's the title of your page. So use those clean descriptive URLs, which include a relevant keyword and reflect the content on the page. So keyword phrase is the title, keyword phrase is the headings, keyword phrase is the alt text for the images. Don't use long, long, long ones. It's too long. It's not going to have any benefit to you and don't make it cryptic with random characters and numbers and letters those actually will negatively impact your user experience and the search engine ranking. They won't know what to do with it. 
And then another one we talked about earlier and in one of our other videos is internal linking. So this is on page optimization. Inside this page, I want you to link to other pages in your site. It does a couple of things for you, but it is often overlooked and it's powerful to create logical internal linking structures connecting those pages. And you can use anchor text that includes relevant keywords, but they help search engines to understand the relationship between your content and the other pages on your site, which then distributes that link authority throughout your website, which is always a good thing because we wanna build our authority in Google's eyes. Lastly, we're gonna talk about user experience. And this is the on-page optimization meaning the website is mobile friendly so the user gets a good version of your website on their phone any version of it loads quickly and it has a seamless browsing experience across tablets phones computer devices it is responsive meaning that it expands it grows and it stacks properly depending on the site the device and how we're using it Make sure that it's easy to navigate and define what somebody is looking for when they can stay on your site even longer. And that's kind of our goal is to give them a good experience and keep them here. That wraps up our discussion of on-page optimization best practices. And I hope that you put these into place and optimize your on-page elements. We talked about a few things here and it will improve your visibility to search engines. But the on-page optimization, remember, it's an ongoing process. So I want you to regularly monitor and fine tune your website so that way you can stay ahead of the ever evolving world of SEO. Just because you're on page one, ranked one today, doesn't mean that somebody else isn't gonna come by. So I want you to in investigate, check it, track it, look at it monthly, at minimum monthly, to make sure that if you have a landing page, a product for sale, information, a lead gen form, that you're continually getting traffic there, they're staying and happy there, none of your elements are broken, and that you will continue to show up high in the search engine results for the particular keyword that you want to rank for, and you're always gonna be on top. Thanks for joining me today on this episode of Smarter Marketing, and I hope you found it valuable. Stay tuned to the next episode where we're going to continue exploring SEO best practices. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review if you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, I want you to keep optimizing and keep growing your business.